Greetings, Minecrafters! Nonsanity here, and welcome to another episode of the Avant 3 Let's Play series here on the FTUG server. I'm back after a little gap, and I've built a new base. I really like it. I'm going to give you a tour, and then we're going to start on Botania. Let's get started! Yeah, that's where it goes with the sound there. All right. First things first. Oh, that's different. Oh, it's not coming out of my head. There's a dye shop over there now. <laughs> with some colored beacons. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I better not. That's. No, I'm going to go look. I'm going to look. It's in spawn. You can't have secret things in spawn. What is this? This is fancy. Oh, we got lots of names around here. Interesting. Huh. I wonder who built this. I thought that Thorgal had staked out this location. So I'm guessing this is his Hall of Patrons. <laughs> it's pretty impressive and it's right here in spawn and he doesn't have a lot more room for expansion he's only got one empty slot looks like he's been using my head shop <laughs> well i would do want to mention i've got one head on display it's not quite as mm, pretentious oh sorry thor not pretentious uh, extravagant extravagant as that but here yankee vader here I have added a support button to my YouTube channel that you can, you know, help support what I do and what I make with a financial contribution. And even before I announced it, Yankee Vader here sent me a bit. So thank you, Yankee Vader. And I will be setting up someplace in the new base to display uh, his head here and anybody else's. Though I do like using the armor stands. I might do that too. It'll be a little bit bigger. All right, new base. It's time to go look at the new base. First, we're going to take a look at it from a distance. So I'm going to fly over here. I was flying around and I found this spot and I just really liked it. Not this spot, but this mountain and there is the new base. I'm quite taken with it. I mean, it could be better, but it was pretty good for just a day or two, not really having any plan, just starting to throw things together. I love how the textures came out. Playing with chisel and bits to do detailing. But I wasn't opposed to just doing regular blocks as well. Much of the construction is just regular blocks. There's a little bit of a water feature over here. And I spent a lot of time thinking up ways to make modern looking surfaces that are different from just textures. I mean, I, I kept with everything with the white and just use blue glass. We've got, you know, this texture with glass and this sort of gridded texture and then these angular beams. I think it had a nice, it, it broke up what would otherwise be a very flat, boring wall. So let's go in here. And using chisels and bits, I've made, you know, even the floor to slightly different levels to make it interesting. Here's the interior. It's mostly empty space. I'll have lots of room to do whatever I need to do. I even have staircases. I like these. Again, ch little chisel and bits to make them so you can see through them. I have a walkway here. Sort of looks rather futuristic. I like it. I do have elevators for where I don't have stairs, because stairs just take up some room and elevators are a little faster. Uh, this is where we landed. This is sort of like the main entrance. It's a narrow little entrance, but that's okay. Up these stairs, we have another little platform up here for something. It's a nice overview. 
Some of the exterior, exterior spaces. So tell me what you think. I'm, I'm happy with it. It doesn't have as much, as much space as the big warehouse. Oh, it's getting dark. Oh, it's raining, probably. And now it's not raining. <laughs> and if you notice, there's no lights anywhere in here. Not a single light. You can almost see some shadows down there. And that's because the roof... Um, let's see, let's go outside. Notice it's not a full block thick. I mean, this edge is a full block thick. But the top is recessed down a little bit, and it's recessed up oh, quite a bit. It's very thin. It's this This main roof is very thin. It's chiseled in bits. And once you start cutting into a block with chisels and bits, it becomes transparent to light. And so that's sunlight shining down and lighting up the interior. And as long as we've got our never make it nighttime like that <laughs> set up, it'll always be fully lit down here. And just in case somebody does want to make it night, I will probably put a environmental controller Probably like buried over under here because that's about in the center of everything and make it so that uh, if it ever is nighttime nothing will spawn I also made this sort of water covered little arboretum there not sure what I'll do with it but I just sort of encomp encompass part of the hillside inside the building which I sort of liked so yeah, this is what I've been doing the last few days. And this area, I'm getting set up for Botania. I've already been laying out some chiseled bits frames. And we have a project chest. You know me, I love my project chests. i got lots of stuff in here. So, uh, let's just get started with it. I always like automating things, especially right from the start. So we're going to start Botania automating. So we're going to hop over here, and I'm going to take down some of this. I've got a pit dug. Let's go ahead and set up our pedestal. And the one annoying thing about this is keeping it filled with water. So let's automate that first of all. I've got some mechanical users here, and I'm going to place one there aimed up. And I'm going to put another one right here aimed down below it I made this eternal water block from Evilcraft uh, the recipe is a weather controller filled bottle of rain so you make one of these let's see recipe yeah you make one of these empty weather bottles which is a little bit of sugar a dark gem and a glass bottle and you go to one of those brown beacon things little cobblestone monuments, temples that are scattered about the landscape. When it's raining, you toss one of these empty bottles onto it and it sucks up the rain and makes it sunny. So I had to disable the automatic rain stopper so that I can get some of these bottles. But uh, that let me have this guy. So now that's aiming down and that's aiming up and we're going to put a conduit between them. So if we put a empty, well we don't have an empty bucket, well we will if I put this bucket in here. Oh, not generic click. Let's see about getting that water back. There we go. Not place block, use item on block I think. We want the left, upper left, no, okay it's not that, it's activate block with item. There we go. That's putting the water in and out. <laughs> Let's snag it when it's empty. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Activate block with item. Toss the bucket in and poof, it's filled with water. And we've got some leftover water down there. There we go. So this fill, these two fill it up. And now we want to move the filled bucket I don't know which of these. This is going to be in and out. We're going to extract... Nope, it's this one. Extract full buckets all the time. 
and up here it's in and out and we're going to extract empty buckets all the time actually somebody in the comments mentioned if i right click it goes straight to this guy it does save some clicks i'm so used to the three though all right so we've got a full bucket here that should be it that's all the automation this thing needs oh it helps me put my armor back on so let's close up the floor and I can put that back. We'll be doing it something with that later. But now let's let's just demonstrate it in action. Let's get some petals. Four white petals and a seed. Hop over here. So we toss those in, toss the seed in. Poof, we have a pure daisy. So let's do the pure daisy next. I actually already have one, so I'm just going to send this one home. Because I don't need it right now. Let's get out my pure daisy setup. And that's going to be over here. Take out some of the floor. I've already dug up some uh, tunnels here. This is under the console. It's empty currently, but it will have stuff. So we're going to use refined storage to build. Oop, nope, got to do it from below. I forgot about that. We'll take these. lay them out like this. I have a little bit of a raised area. And we'll pop down and put like that. Actually, that one could be empty. Alright, constructors placed onto the ceiling, like so. And they are going to be programmed in a moment to only place oak wood and smooth stone whoops and these are only going to be picking up living wood and living rock and we're going to have two pieces of cable there and down here we're going to stick our controller now let's get some more cable yeah I thought I had a lot Connect that like that. Here we're going to run the cable over the controller. That's where I want to have all my hardware. Oh, I need to uh, thin out the ceiling. I'm get out my handy bag filled with all my chisels and bits tools. And oh, just undo one of those. And thin this up, which lets the light through. There we go. That's all it takes. Oh, I forgot to get out a bag. I have my bags here. This one. Okay. And we'll toss in the extra. Oh, it did already. All right, good. Put that back. Put the chisel back. And put that away for now. And back to the cable. All right. So, I should don't need that one. This is where my grid is going to be. I'm going to put the drive. So the grid will be at the top. Let's actually go out there. Make a hole up here. So the grid face up. Maybe it has to be applied like that. No, it can't face up. Well, that sucks. All right. Well, let's put this top back on, and we'll break open the front so we can see it. All right. Underneath that, we'll put the power block. And that will connect 
to the cable and then on the side of that here we'll place power up, and give it plenty of exciters there we go so these should all be functional let's see yep they're lit, lit up Surprised it wasn't sucking up all the uh, blocks there. But I guess it has to be told what. So we should now have access. Well, no, I have to put the drive in. I need to have the drive. And I'm just going to put the drive right here. And stick it in. There we go. Come out got living rock and we've got living wood and hopefully I've got the other two materials I need smooth stone come back smooth stone no I of course I don't have any smooth stone on me and some oak okay Soon I'll be moving all my stuff over. I'll be doing that off camera because that's just moving. All right, so let's come over here and program this thing. So the corners I'm going to be have as stone. Like that. Stone. And then all of the sides will be oak. That way, when it's running, it's making both in one setup. And I just placed a piece of cable that I didn't mean to. All right, and then the top, the corners will be living rock. And the sides will be living wood wood living wood and that one and then stone and stone okay so if we come over here and we put wood and stone in ah, that's full I need to put some more drives in there it placed all the stuff now we just need a block of grass. I do have grass in here. Oh, that's sandy grass. Oh, there it is. Oh, let go. Let go. Get off. Get off. Okay. It was very sticky. So we're going to put... I could make this floating, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now. And we'll place it like that. Plant the daisy. That should turn them to living rock and living stone. And when it does, the destructors will suck it up and put it into the drive. So that looks like it's done. Let's see, I don't have the quite equal amounts here. There we go, 124 of each. And I'll just put the excess away for now. Oop, I left out uh, some of my chisels and some of my bits were left out. Put them away. And that is the, the white chiseled rock. That's chiseled? Oh, that's it's probably not a full block. Yeah, some of them weren't full blocks. <laughs> All right, we'll just chew them up back into a bag. This bag. There they got. Oh, did you see that? They got turned into uh, living rock and living stone and replaced. And that system is now working. Just that easy. this 
spent a lot of time using chisels and bits building this base. Alright, and this one I guess I can get rid of too. Alright. Put the chisel away. We're good. Dut, dut. And these two are extras. Put them away. Alright. Two projects done. We have a Petal Apothecary that refills itself. We'll automate it later on. And we have a source of living rock and living wood. That goes right on cue. As you can see, I had it running before, so I've got a good bit of both. Alright, now we're going to need, now that we've got a source of living stone and living wood, we can go ahead and start doing some mana production. We can make some flowers in the Petal Apothecary and use the wood and the stone to make mana pools, the stone, mana spreaders, the wood, and that is what this structure up here is. I might go with something different later on, but for the moment, I'm going to go with... Let's see. It's a node. That's the processor. Yes. For the moment, I'm going to go with thermolilies. So, let's get this set up. We're going to have 16 mana pools and 4 mana spreaders. Like this, with a mana spreader in the middle. I did make my thermolilies floating, so I have them up here in the air. All right, that will be my mana storage. Next, we need to oh, not that. Next, we're going to have to collect the mana as it's produced and send it down. I'm gonna need. I need my wand. So we're going to right-click, aim these things down. I made what looks like little brackets to hold them out of the chisel and bits. Why not? And I made a composite lens of velocity and potency, just to speed these suckers up. Because I'm going to put a good number of thermolilies. I'm not maxing out everything as I've done before. This is, you know, just going to be good enough. So now the thermolilies. I'm going to place them. Excuse me. I keep saying thermolilies. They're endoflames, not thermolilies. Forget thermolilies. These are endoflames. They take fuel and burn it for power. So this was the pattern I was doing. Forgot one over here. Okay. And then I had them on top as well. There'll be a few left over from this pattern that originally I had on top of the mana spreaders, but uh, they can't go through, the, the beams can't go through a floating flower, unfortunately. So the, the last four I will put on this side and this side. It makes them makes the symmetrical, but not four-way symmetrical. But that's okay. So now there should be ten around each spreader. Five up here, four down here, and one on the side. Used to be five and five, but now yeah, this works well enough. And because I put the mana spreaders first, they should all be linked to the closest spreader, which should be the one that they're right around. 
You can see that the spreader has a rainbow lines around it. If I move over here, it switches to that spreader. That way, the spreaders are all sh balancing the load, so they each have 10 that are beholden to them. All right, now how are they going to get the fuel to burn? Now, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. Oh, I still have to put one more lens on that one. Yes, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a solenolia here. This is another flower that stops the botania magnet from picking things up nearby. So I'm going to want this stuff to drop fuel, and I want this to pick it up. Now, uh, notice I no longer have my old, uh, was it practicality? No, which, what was the, which magnet was I using? Quantum Flux. I don't have that anymore. Instead of my baubles, I have a ring of magnetization from Batania. I uh, used some of the mana other people have had available, mistaken, in fact, and some of her gear to make it. So I made that a little bit early because it's just going to be more convenient that way. So this thing works. This is where they're going to drop, and that's in close enough that all of them can reach it. And I'm going to use an open crate to do the dropping. So I'll place that there. And then where is the open crate going to get its stuff? And that is going to be this node. I think it's the right one. Fuel, yes. Mana 1, Fuel Destination. All right, what is this? This is RF Tools Control. It's an expansion to RF Tools. I have not used it before. Uh, some of the others on the server have been using it quite extensively. But we're going to put it to use now to... Uh, properly control this stuff. Normally I would have used Steve's factory manager, but we don't have that in 1.10 Minecraft yet. It may be soon, or may even be in an early stage right now, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe one of its descendants. But all right, now we got the last part here to do. Let's open up some of this and put down, see this is the programmer, I'm going to have it here, it doesn't need to be here, but it just makes it a little bit more convenient. Into this spot I'm going to put the processor, and I've cut out a little slot so you can see if I take this off, I put it back on again, it just you know leaves that bit of green there visible. This is just a lime-colored, flat-colored block that I'm going to stick there. We will see what that does in a moment. So how do you do RF Tools Control? Well, um, I'm going to erase... Let's see... How do we... Oh, just clear. There we go. So how do we do this? Let's see, is that in there still? Yes, I'll grab that out. So it's not going to work yet. In this, it's all tile-based programming, so it can get very complicated and over the top. If you've done some Steve's Factory Manager, if you've watched a lot of my other Batania, any of my other Batania automations using Steve's Factory Manager, this is sort of similar, but it is different. <laughs> So I've got one of these um, uh, program cards. What's the recipe for that? Okay, card base and paper. Card base is green and, okay, it's all fairly basic. Toss that in there. And now we're going to program it using uh, this stuff. Now the yellows are what, actually this is, if, if you've watched some of my, er, one of my early episodes on Psy, this is very similar to Psy. It's sort of a cross between Psy and Steve's Factory Manager. It looks like Psy, though. These yellow ones are how things start. And we are going to use a timer. So we're going to drag that out here. We're also going to use a redstone signal. So I'm going to drag that out there, too. 
And then, down here in the green is where things happen. This grabs items into the programmer. I'm going to grab one of those. And this sends things out. And I'm going to grab one of those. Now, they're all blinking red because they have not been set up correctly. But if you notice, they have automatically got these little green dots at their edges. So this is a start. It's a timer. So every time the timer goes off, it's going to travel to, it's going to send control to the next tile wherever the green dot is. It sends it over here. And this one is going to be a redstone signal. And when that signal happens, it's going to follow the green dot to this guy. This guy is going to pick up some objects from one inventory. And this one is going to put them back into a different inventory. And it's going to follow that green dot again. So visually, that's pretty simple. Whenever the timer goes off or the redstone goes off, pick things up, put them down. The way it's going to work is there's going to be a timer so that when enough time has passed that all of these have used up their fuel, it will grab some fuel from a, a chest I'll have down here, and it'll send it up here to this node, which will put it into the uh, dropper, the open crate, which will fall out onto the ground. And I can send more than one. I can send a full 40 since there's 40 flowers, and it'll do them all at once. So now let's set that up. Now, as you saw, I have a node up here, and it has a channel, which I've called mana1, and it has a node name, which I've called fuel destination. Let's set up another one down here. We'll put it right over here, why not? Another node. This one, no, let's fuel toggle, that'll go here. So, actually, let's make it face it this way. And here I'm going to put a chest. So this one is fuel source, SRC. Also, channel mana one. They all have to be on the same channel, channel mana one. And this is fuel toggle. That green block above, right there, by putting this thing below it, like so. No, it's going to face the wrong way. Let me go up above and remove the green block for a moment. Place this. All right, so now it's facing up. Good. And the green block on top of it. To tell you what, listen. Click. All right, I'm going to click it. Sounds like a button. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is a contact button. Whatever block is that circular side is facing, when it the whole block is touched, it acts like a button. So I can touch this block from any side, and it would act like a button. But by because I've got it wrapped up in chiseled and bit bits, it only works up here. And if we were down there, we would see that sea was lit up. And that puts out a redstone signal. So this node, the toggle, is going to be... That's not really a toggle, but that's okay. Actually, let's change its name. BTN. Fuel button. It's going to be talking to that button, and this guy is talking to this chest, which is filled with red coal. That's from Extra Utilities. It's been suggested to me that it's better than coal. I'm having some oddness with it, but it does seem to be better. A uh, quick explanation of how you get red coal. Oh, there we go. Take some coal and put it here in the resonator. And that turns it into red coal, which I've got piping out. Oh, i got lots of it over here. Excellent. And I'm going to tell this chest, yeah, it should all go in there. Clear. And then take the redstone that would have appeared. <laughs> now if I put all of this into the system, all this red coal should show up. 
in the chest. It does. Good. And there should be one more stack, or half stack. This thing has got souped up with a maximum 20 speed upgrades, which is why it's going so fast. It takes a lot of GP, 336, but uh, Toddy was duplicating the dragon egg, and he gave me three. <laughs> so I have three of these, They call it says solar panel, but these are actually the dragon egg generators. Put a dragon egg on top, and uh, it generates a whole lot of GP, 500 each. So that's 1,500 right there. And then down below somewhere, I've got my water mills. Down in here. Yeah. All these over here were generating what I had before. Mm. Oh, yeah. I forgot. My polar bear. Hi there. Ursa P. Majors. <laughs> ah, stuck on something. All right, so that's how you get the red coal. Hop back. It does have, what was it like, how many times? Eight times the burn? Yeah. I think regular coal is, regular coal is 1,600, and this is 12,800. So quite a bit more oomph. It says it's supposed to take, I would imagine it takes longer, but it, I mean, it says burn time, but it doesn't seem to take that long when it runs, but it does seem to generate a lot more. And since it's just a matter of running it through the resonator with basically free energy, there's no point in not doing it. Okay, so we've got those all set. So let's now, uh, one thing we need to go over here and say, let's clear this. If you ever want to know what you can do in this guy, hit help. It gives you some commands. This is the program. This is the processor. Now I've given it a CPU core. Let's, let's uh, RF tools control. Yeah, I think that's everything. There are different CPU cores. They have different recipes. That's a basic one. Uh, so the better one, that's the best one. I went ahead and made the best one. It lets you run more programs. See this one, one operation per tick. This one is four operations per tick, and this one does 16 operations per tick. So they get faster. I also have a RAM chip right here, which is also pretty basic. And I have an advanced network card. Now there's a regular network card, like so, and then the advanced network card, which takes more stuff. I went with the advanced because, as you can see, does it say here? Right here. Yeah, the regular network card has a 17 by 17 by 17 area that it can see the nodes. But this has a 33 by 33 by 33 area. And that one up there is too far away for the basic. So I'd upgrade to the advanced. We put these pieces in here. And that, in that regard, this is sort of feels like open computer mod. That's what it's called, right? You know what I mean. Not computer craft, but the other one. Where you have to build all the parts. Oh, it's already got some of the red coal in there. So we've got those in there. And then we're going to program this thing. Let's go ahead and save this. It's not going to run because it's not correct. And then you put it in here. If we click this little button over here, we can see what it specifically is using. And I gave it these six slots. Zero, one, two, three, four. It doesn't really need those three. It really only needs one. Let's just give it the one. Slot zero. So we'll remember that. So now we'll turn that off and take it out. Oh, but we do need to do net setup. Net setup. And the name of my network is Mana1. Three nodes. That's the ticket. I want to see fuel source, fuel destination, and fuel button. Those are the three. The one up there and the two down here. It saw them all, and now it knows about them. Excellent. All right, let's finish programming this. We need to 
still running over there. Good. We need to set up some things. If you click on it, it gets these fields down here, the ticks. Now, uh, whoops, coal, the red coal, that says there it's 1600, but it's not. If in here it says 12,800. So that's eight times. Hmm. I think I need to look these numbers up. I'll be right back. Actually, I'm looking at the time and how much I still left to do in this episode. And we're, I think we're about the halfway point. So we're going to split this into two-parter. Uh, they'll come out one after the other, one day and the next day. And uh, we'll f pick it up from there. I hope you're liking the new base. I'm liking it. Anyway, I will see you very shortly for the second half of this, the first Batania episode of the Avant 3 server. See you next time. Oh, well, no, let's do it properly. Yeah, the music? Music's going, I think. This is... Oh, no, it's raining. Of course. Stop raining. No music until it stops raining. Actually, the music probably already started. Because it comes in so that it ends just as I finish saying my catchphrase, which is, this is Nonsanity, signing out. Take care, be good, and see you next time.